Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and it's time to round out Patron Week with a request from this month's Quasar Commander, and what a request it is. I love talking about lore archetypes, and today, we're covering one of the big ones. So far, Crawlers are the only archetype from the World Legacy storyline we've talked about, and we're gonna add another to the roster by turning back the clock just a little bit. Premiering in the August 2017 core set, Code of the Duelist, World Chalice was one of the first major releases to show the world what Link summoning was all about, and there were a lot of expectations to live up to. This release was setting the tone for formats to come, and everyone wanted something different. Would these themes provide slower, more deliberate play to complement the fact that Extra Deck Summoning had a bit of a debuff? Or would this be yet another axis on which powerful combo decks would leverage a flood of monsters to realize their game plan? Many people were hopeful for the former, especially after the wild tournament success of Zodiac, but as we would all find out, it was the latter that held sway. Chronicling the tale of three youths, their pet dragon, an ancient artifact, and the mysterious guide who sets them on their path, World Chalice would lay the groundwork for many Link decks to follow. So let's get our party kitted out with some sweet gear, see how their combo techs work together, then see what optional side content can help round out our team. It's time to raise a glass to World Chalice. So, what's the deal with World Chalice? Well, that's the thing. This archetype isn't defined by any particular parallel between the cards, but instead how different they all are. There are a variety of types, levels, and attributes, with the only real unifying element being their names, which... yeah... and their Link Monster effects, which we'll touch on in that section. There's also a small, normal monster sub-theme, as denoted by our first three monsters. Crowned by the World Chalice is a level 2 water spellcaster monster with 0 attack and 2100 defense. Chosen by the World Chalice is a level 3 fire psychic monster with 1600 attack and 0 defense. And Beckoned by the World Chalice is a level 4 earth warrior monster with 1800 attack and 0 defense. In the theme, they really are just differently statted monsters so they can work with our other effects, but on a micro level, they have their own little quirks. Each of them can be used for various kinds of Xyz summoning, not to mention as different levels to help with Synchro summoning, Chosen can be emergency teleported into play, Beckoned can be Rotted, and Crowned can, uh... Uh... Um... Uh... Huh. Anyway, next up is World Chalice Guard Dragon, a level 1 Wind Dragon monster with 400 attack and defense, and when a card or effect is activated that targets your linked monster, as a quick effect, you can send this card from your hand or face-up field to the grave to negate that activation, and if you do, destroy that card. You can also banish this card from your grave, then target a normal monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position to your zone a link monster points to. This is another reason to play those normal monsters, as Guard Dragon can reborn them to help you link climb. It also incentivizes you to play other normal monsters that give you some utility, like Angel Trumpeter to gain access to some synchros. And if you use its effect to protect your monsters from a targeted effect, then that's just a faster way to get it into the grave. Also note that it protects linked monsters, not link monsters. So if you have link monsters, but they're not pointing to anything, this card doesn't help them. And on the flip side, if you have a non-link monster, but a link monster is pointing to them, Guard Dragon can be used to save it. It's a very versatile card, able to fill a number of different roles from Protector to Extender, and ain't it just the most precious little baby? Yes it is! Yes it is! Bonk. Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, is a level 2 Light Fairy monster with 100 attack and 2000 defense, and if normal or special summoned, you can add a World Chalice monster from your deck to your hand. And if this card is in your grave, you can send a monster from your hand or field to the grave to add this card to your hand. Thankfully, this is a hard once per turn, so no infinite looping discarding shenanigans here. This helpful little fairy is our Stratos, giving us any monster we need. Sure, half of our picks are normal monsters, but a plus one is still a plus one, and the part of your searches that aren't normal monsters are pretty good. And if you ever end up with a spare normal, then that's just fodder you can use to get Lee back in the fight. That's a pretty callous effect, not gonna lie, but I'm sure that's just a side effect of the game's mechanics. I'm sure sacrificing others for their own gain isn't something that's reflective of the lore, it's just a cute little fairy! 
scary! World Legacy World Chalice is a level 5 dark machine monster with zero attack and defense. If any number of monsters are special summoned from the extra deck except during the damage step, you can tribute this card to send those monsters to the grave. If this normal summoned or set card leaves the field, you can special summon two World Chalice monsters from your deck except a copy of itself, and during your main phase except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card from your grave to add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. Now looking at the stat line, you might think this is the biggest piece of garbage you've ever laid your eyes on. It's a one tribute monster with zero battle prowess. But I promise, this is probably our most important main deck monster. Many of our best plays actually revolve around getting a normal summon chalice onto the board, then sending it away to summon more monsters out of your deck, usually a guard dragon for setup later, and lead to get you a search immediately. And with extra deck cards like Salomon Great All Mirage, it's not exactly difficult to pull off. So I'd call this a glass all the way full situation. Alright, that does it for the main deck monsters, now it's time to talk about some of their upgrades. While we have a few different kinds of extra deck monsters, many of them are links, so we'll be going over those first, as they're much closer to the core of this strategy. And said links also share a common effect. If they're sent from the field to the grave, you can special summon a World Chalice monster from your hand. It doesn't care how it was sent, as it triggers equally well off of being destroyed as being used as Link material, which is the preferred method. Also, uh, this is Recording Booth Nova. I just realized that it doesn't say anything about having to be sent from the main monster zone. It just has to be on the field and then sent to the grave. So if you ever equip one of the World Chalice Links, this does trigger the effect, I believe. So, um... For anyone out there looking to make custom World Chalice cards, uh, this is a design space that has not been used. Starting us off is Imduck the World Chalice Dragon, a Link 1 Wind Dragon monster with 800 attack, requiring any normal monster that's not a token as material. And considering how prevalent tokens would be later on, that, um, that restriction makes sense. During your main phase, you can normal summon a World Chalice monster in addition to your normal summoner set. And at the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster this card points to, you can destroy that opponent's monster. So it's like an El Shadal construct. A very, very specific El Shadal construct. But that effect doesn't mean anything if your opponent doesn't summon monsters to the right zones. The important part is that extra normal summon. Remember how Chalice is a bit difficult to summon being a one tribute monster? Well, as it turns out, it's actually stupidly easy. Just take any of your normal monsters, even an off theme one, turn them into Imduck, and now you can tribute Imduck for the summon of the Chalice. And bonus, this will trigger Imduck's summon effect to get another monster out of your hand. At this point, you can all mirage the Chalice away, or if you got the extra summon from Imduck, you can make a link too which will then trigger Chalice's Grave effect. This card is amazing and is going to be a huge part of your best combos. And they're still so cute! Look, its new collar is a charm that looks like the World Chalice. I'm calling it. This is the best Yu-Gi-Oh doggo. Ib, the World Chalice Priestess, is a Link 2 Water Spellcaster monster with 1800 attack, requiring any two monsters with different types and attributes. This linked card can't be destroyed by battle or card effect, and your opponent can't target this linked card with card effects. If any monster this card points to would be destroyed by card effect, you can send this card to the grave instead. That's kinda wild, not gonna lie. Like, as long as Lib is pointing to or at a monster, it has all three of the major kinds of protection. Targeting, battle destruction, and effect destruction. It's basically a stone's throw away from being a towers, and it can provide a bit of protection to anything it points to. But with that stat line, it unfortunately doesn't have what it takes to be an offensive powerhouse, so you won't be able to leverage those protections into something more aggro. Instead, it'll usually end up being a very protected monster that you can trade in to give protection to another card but you could make it more offensive with some buffs. Also, its sideways pointing arrows aren't always the best for when it comes to link climbing, so you'll usually be making this later on in your combo, but once you get Eve into the main monster zone, your ability to link summon opens up dramatically. It might seem like a difficult card to use at times, but it's all about reading the Ib and flow of battle. Aram, the World Chalice Blade Master, is a Link 2 Fire Cybers monster with 2000 attack, requiring two World Chalice monsters as material. It gains 300 attack for each World Legacy monster in your grave with a different name, and you can tribute a World Chalice monster this card points to, then target another monster in your grave and special summon it to your zone this card points to. Now, point of order, this boost is derived from the amount of World Legacy monsters in your grave with different names, not World Chalices, so the only card that helps you on theme with this is World Legacy World Chalice. 
If you want more buffs, you're gonna have to branch out into that theme, which we'll talk about in a later video. But the Revival effect is the important part of this card. It can Monster Reborn any monster, it just needs to tribute a World Chalice monster this card points to, so anything you splash in is fair game, from extenders to utility pieces to even boss monsters. It can even get Ib back into the main monster zone like I said earlier, right where you need them. This is definitely a card you're gonna wanna check out. Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior, is a Link 3 monster with 2500 attack, requiring two or more Link monsters as material. If this card is Link Summoned, you can draw cards equal to the number of World Chalice monsters this card points to. And once per turn, you can send a card from each player's field to the grave, which makes this a much slower DPE. And it doesn't even destroy, which to me sounds like a plus, though I'm under no delusion that this is clearly the early build. It can also help you regain card advantage, which is very welcome because, as it turns out, summoning monsters from your hand over and over again is going to exhaust your resources real fast. It also just needs to point to World Chalice monsters, not World Chalice Link monsters, so it's a little lenient in that regard. And if the links you use to summon Ningirsu were other World Chalice ones, you can layer your effects where you resolve the summon from hand ones first, helping to make sure Ningirsu's link points are filled up before the draw resolves. This is a pretty neat payoff that gives you the ability to not only remove a problem card your opponent has, but potentially get rid of a floodgate on your side of the field that you don't want to deal with anymore, or can trigger other effects. You can even activate this as chain link 1, then chain a normal trap or quick play spell, then just have Ningirsu send that card to Grave, basically making this a free effect. And as a Link 3, it makes superb material for Access Code Talker, so you never have to worry about finding yourself without a powerful game ender, because with Ningirsu, there's nothing to spear, but spear itself. Alright, now it's time to talk about some less pointed monsters in our theme. World Chalice Guard Dragon Almer Duke is a level 9 Wind Dragon Fusion monster with 3000 attack and 2600 defense, requiring 3 Link monsters as material. It must first either be Fusion Summoned or Special Summoned from the extra deck by tributing the above monsters you control in which case you don't use polymerization. This card can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each, and when an attack is declared involving this card and an opponent's Link monster, you can banish a Link monster with the same Link rating as that monster from your field or grave to destroy that opponent's monster, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. Hey, it looks like we're bringing back that pseudo-construct effect. And it's not once per turn either, so as long as you have matching Link monsters in your grave, you can keep burn destroying your opponent's monsters. And because we have so many different ratings of monsters, we're likely to have a match. Though you can still just attack everything, even if your opponent doesn't have any links, it's still gonna be pretty saucy. I also like that you contribute the monsters so you don't even have to play a fusing effect if you don't want to, and even makes for a neat super poly target if need be. Though, now that we're in Master Rule 4 revision and links aren't quite as necessary for extra deck use, it's a tad bit less useful. It's probably the best game ender we have on theme, because it's more than ready to put up their Almer Dukes. Ib, the World Chalice Justiciar, is a level 5 water spell caster synchro tuner monster with 1800 attack and 2100 defense, requiring generic material. But for this card synchro summon, you can treat a World Chalice normal monster you control as a tuner. If this card is synchro summoned, you can add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand, and if this synchro summoned card is sent from the field to the grave, you can special summon a World Chalice monster from your deck or grave, except a copy of itself. Ooh, -hoo 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 -hoo. now this is a wild one. While World Chalice never really broke into the competitive meta, this card by itself was a nightmare to contend with, because it's basically a combo in a box that almost any deck could use. If you had access to level 5 synchros, and even if you didn't have it inherently, there were a few engines you could tech in to get there, it was a free search and a free floating effect. And while our monsters themselves aren't very powerful, they cover a wide variety of types, attributes, and levels, so you could just find a card that fits your combo. You could even use it in a variety of ways. Link summoning was the easiest, of course, but as a synchro tuner, not only could you just synchro climb, it gave you access to cards that specifically needed synchro tuners. But now, no one has to worry about it because this card is banned. I know some people want it back, it's a pretty neat tool and it does suck that World Chalice can't use it, but considering its wide array of utility in almost any deck, it's hard to justify Judiciar's return. 
this leaves us with a couple spell cards. Now, they're World Legacy cards, but they do revolve around Chalice, so they're good to go. World Legacy's Heart is a normal spell card that targets two World Chalice monsters in your grave with different names and adds them to your hand. And if your linked Link monster would be destroyed by a battle, you can banish this card from your grave. This is going to be integral to keeping your hand stocked up for those Link climbing plays, because like I mentioned with Ningirisu, your hand isn't exactly a large resource like the deck or grave so you're bound to run out of cards eventually. It's also good at helping you recover if you're low on resources regardless to get your plays jump started, and the Grave Effect is a nice extra touch. It does require a bit of setup on board, it only works on Link monsters that are also Link, so it's not quite as forgiving as Guard Dragon, and an observant opponent might find a way to sequence around that protection, but it's better to have it than not. Though, Effect Destruction Protection would be pretty neat. Just saying, this card is more than 5 years old at this point, and Effect Destruction was pretty rampant then. Don't even get me started on now. Tier Laments just casually pop cards with their field spell, can you believe that? The art also shows a pretty cool function of the World Chalice. It can change sizes to fit any situation, which means it can fit in any cup holder! Truly an artifact of legend! World Legacy Discovery is a field spell card that grants a 300 attack and defense bonus to all your World Chalice monsters. Once per turn, if a face-up World Chalice monster you control is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can target a World Chalice monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, which means it can't revive those cool, cool Link monsters. Oh well, it was the dawn of the Link era, they had to pull the brake somewhere. It's pretty nice for what it is, basically adding a little extra floating effect to your monster to help you keep your board presence live, not to mention a nice little boost, which can even summon Almer Duke back to retaliate on your next turn if it, you know, comes to that, but otherwise doesn't really help your game plan in the short term. And as a combo deck, the short term is basically your entire game plan. It's some really nice artwork, and I'm sure it helped out a lot of duelists during those pre-release tournaments, but in the modern game, I'd be surprised if anyone discovered a use for this. Alright, that's all the World Chalice cards, but what do we do with them? Well, I feel like World Chalice is more defined by what options the deck has for Link Summoning, rather than its own roster. True, Ningirisu is good removal, and Almer Duke can kick serious butt, however any generic Link monster is easily within our grasp, and that means we're going for aggro, using monsters like Access Code Talker and Boral Sword Dragon to close out the game on the spot, while leveraging cards like Trigate Wizard to give us some protection and interruption going first. So what can we play to help them out? Well, they are members of the World Legacy storyline, so it's only proper to give those cards a look to see which ones mesh with our playstyle. This is by no means means an exhaustive list, so if there are any that I left out that you feel work with the theme, uh, feel free to share them below. Lib, the World Keyblade Master, is especially good in our deck, as one of our on-theme monsters is a World Legacy one, so at any point after you link Chalice off, Lib is completely online and gets you any World Chalice spell or trap card, not to mention that using it as a link climbing tool can spin a card. And the card you're likely to be getting is World Legacy's Successor, because it is a monster reborn, and we do love monsters. Monster Reborns. Some of our other World Legacies are pretty good too. World Crown is a free summon from hand to help with our Link summonings, and can provide some control if you keep it on the field. And World Lance is a hand trap that's gonna let you win basically any battle. World Legacy's Sorrow is an Omni Negate, though none of our monsters inherently co-link, so you'll need to make sure you're running off theme choices to help out with that. And World Legacy's Landmark can turn a special summon Chalice into fresh monsters if you don't want to have it stick around for its negation, and can even help with Ningirsu's draw effect. What about other Link monsters? Well, one cycle of cards I think works really well with us are the Charmer Links. Since we play every attribute, besides Divine, we can access whichever ones we want that can take advantage of our opponent's grave. For instance, Beckoned can be used to make Alsa to steal Fenrir's, while Chalice can enable Dark to summon well, you name it, darks are everywhere. Though, using six extra deck slots to have all six charmers on standby is a little much, so you should tailor your roster to fit whichever meta you expect to battle against. Though, uh, maybe keep area on hand just in case you run into Umi control. As for other Link monsters, we've already talked about how Access Code and Boral Sword are great game enders, Trigate Wizard has cool control elements, and All Mirage is a good Chalice enabler, but we can also utilize a ton of cards that are otherwise big material sinks. Appaloosa, Unchained Abomination, 
Legion, Saryuja, Mech Knight Crusade Avermax, even Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. IP Mascarena is also a must run, as its granted protection makes all of our payoff links that much better. Defender of the Labyrinth is pretty funny considering all of our normal monsters and can provide a nice debuff to our opponent's monsters while making Beckoned a 2300 point monster. Link Spider is very helpful if your hand is flooded with normal monsters. Pentastag can give Almer Duke piercing, making its multi attack hella lethal. And of course, we can't forget all the things you can do with nightmares. Heck, if you want to play World Legacy Sorrow, they're the best way to make sure you have co links. Since we have some normal monsters, we have some tools to turbo material out of our deck. While emergency teleports can summon Chosen, it's a bit limited, especially if you don't tech in any other targets for it. So Unexpected Die is the preferred option. And with all the link summoning we'll be doing, I think this is one of the few decks that can run Pot of Avarice. After people stop playing Beast Deals and Ishizu cards, that is, we can easily churn through five or more monsters in a single turn. So having a way to reset our cards is a must. In fact, we do it so much, you might want to keep a Digusto Emerald on standby just in case. And it even pulls Double Duty as a way to summon back our normal monsters. A little engine that's really funny in this deck is the Agent of Creation Venus. This was one of the big high roll cards that was being trotted about when Link Monsters first came out, and works especially well with us. The Shine Balls can be converted into Link Spider and Imduk specifically in that order, and from there you can do basically whatever you want. I mean, right there you have Venus, Link Spider, Imduk, and a Shine Ball, which gets you a maximum power Saryuja. And by using Transmodify, you can actually special summon this card by using Lee as the base monster. It's really wild. And things almost got way worse with the printing of Agent of Destruction Venus. Uh, thank goodness its effects do lock each other out for the rest of the turn. Though I suppose you could just summon it out of your hand with Saryuja, so I guess we're not out of the woods yet. As for a silly tech pick, my mind is set on Five-Headed Link Dragon. Our multi-attribute deck puts us in a great position to summon this card with its bonus effect, letting us wipe our opponent's board before attacking with a 5,000 point body. And if any deck has the ability to bury 5 cards for a few turns to keep this online, it's this deck. And imagine linking this off for access code talker, absolutely iconic. And that's all I have to say about World Chalice. I don't feel like its power level has stood the test of time, but is probably one of the most fun I've had with Link climbing in a good long while. And I think that counts for something, especially as a way to get people into the vibe of the mechanic. And honestly, the deck is only as good as the cards it can link into. And with the way Link monsters keep getting more and more generic, we're always on the cusp of this being the shell of a Link good stuff deck that generates an absurd amount of value. It also kicked off one of the most most endearing storylines Yu-Gi-Oh has had to date, eschewing just about everything about Dual Terminal and still managed to tell a story just as engaging in a fraction of the time. And that takes skill, especially with how our story is shared. So everyone, I'd like you to join me in giving three cheers to World Chalice. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are World Chalice just a few levels away from beating the final boss of Yu-Gi-Oh? Or are they in need of a few more side quests? And which member of the World Chalice team is your favorite? I'm on Team Lee. I do love an adorable, innocent little fairy. And make sure to like and subscribe, because we're trying to get to 50k, so I can do Akiza Explained. And sharing this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Green Knight, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Adam Zagedel, Avi Chali, Kane Senpai, Cameron Berg, Chibi Gohan, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iskander711, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larachia, Mana Charge, Marluxia is a Girl, Meteornis, Michael Madsen, Mighty Action X, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Rem T. Bright, RJ the Jank Monarch, Ruxith Sarani, Sophie, apparently, The Charizard Flame, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Ariel Kersey, Bear Shark to Studios, Chaz Ghost, Chris Kessler, Corbinisms, Danny Bound, Emini, Eva Padilla, Herbal D, Jesus Garcia, Kale the Dragon, Carp, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lord Whoop De Doo, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Piccata, Matt Simmons, 
Neo Trinity 7, Nitromo, put a card trooper up my ass, call that a card trooper and ass sandwich, but Noah Gent calls it lunch, I vote for Ophion to be banned, Sarah Lo Sulci, Shooting Star 3300, Star Lord 777, Super Purd, Tucker Ordorn, and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits, help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh's archetypes, and get all my videos just a little bit early, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you'd like to see a video about the next archetype in the World Legacy story, check out this video I made covering crawlers. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series progression polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye